In this video, we will discuss the problem smallest number with sum of the digits as n and divisible by 10 to the power n. So, the problem basically says that we have to find the smallest number such that the sum of the digits is n and it is divisible by 10 to the power n. So, let us first of all take the sample example that has been given. Let us take the first test case here. So, suppose we have been given the first test case as n is equal to 5. So, what we need to do is we need to find the smallest number such that the sum of the digits of that particular number is nothing but equal to n and it is divisible by it is divisible by 10 to the power n that is nothing but 10 to the power 5. Okay. So, first of all let us talk about something that when a particular number is divisible by 10 to the power n. So, let us say if a number has to be divisible by 10 to the power 1. So, in that case I can say that that number should have a 0 in the end. Correct? At 1 0 at, and in the end at least 1 0 but minimum 1 0 should be there. Right? There can be more zeros but at least 1 0. If a number has to be div divisible by 10 to the power 2 then that number should have two zeros in the end, at least two zeros in the end. If a number has to be divisible by 10 to the power 3, in that case it has, it needs to have at least three zeros in the end. Similarly, if a number has to be divisible by 10 to the power n, then in that case it need, it needs n zeros in the end. That is for sure, n zeros in the end, correct? According to this approach, it needs n zeros in the end. If a number has to be divisible by 10 to the power n, then it has to be, uh, it needs to have n zeros in the end. That is one thing for sure. Okay. So, in our answer, whatever we will be returning, one thing is for sure that we will require n zeros in the end. Okay. So, so the first thing is that we require n zeros in the end so that our number that we are going to make, it will have, uh, like it will be divisible by 10 to the power n. So, for that we need n zeros in the end okay now what we are uh, what we are said is we are also said that we need to find the smallest number okay we need to find the smallest number now we know that we'll be using n zeros we will be using whatever number we'll be making uh, that will have the sum as n we'll be using n zeros in the end that is one thing for sure so how do we ge generate the smallest number so in this case if n is equal to 5 so if we make a number like 2 2 1 or let's say 2, 1, 2 or something like this or let's say 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, these are bigger numbers, right? After that, if you add 5 zeros, so that will be a very big number to be honest. So, in that case, if you will observe, so what I can do is I can just have a 5 and then after that, if I'll have 5 zeros, right? So, in this case, what will happen? This particular number will have the sum of digits as n that is nothing but 5 and it will be divisible by 10 to the power 5 as well, okay? So, that is the case here. And now let us consider another case. So, suppose uh, if we were given the other test case that is n is equal to 20. Suppose we were given n is equal to 20 here. Okay. So, if we were given n is equal to 20, then the sum of the digits, right, sum of the digits of that particular number should be equal to nothing but n that is nothing but 20 and it should be divisible by 10 to the power 20. So, if it has to be divisible by 10 to the power 20, so it, it should have 20 0 in the end. That is one thing for sure that 20 zeros in the end should be there. Okay. But now, how do we generate this 20? So, for generating this 20, we can have 20 ones or something, right? We can have various things. But what is the minimum uh, possible digits in which you can have it? So, can I say that 20 can be made using nothing but uh, two nines if I use a nine? Like what if I want to minimize, if I want to find the smallest number? So, in that case, if I want to find the smallest number so in that case i cannot uh, i have to use 20 zeros like i have to use n zeros that is for sure but one thing that i can uh, optimize is the number of digits that i am using to generate uh, the particular sum n and if i want to use the minimum number of digits because if i use a lot of ones let's say so that will uh, that will increase the number right that will uh, make the number larger but if i want to make the smallest number in that case if i want to make a particular sum in that case, I can use as many nines as I can, right? So, if I have been given 20, so let's say I use one nine, okay? Because I cannot use n, uh, 10, the digits that I can use is nothing but 0 to 9 to make a particular digit, right? So, the digits available are from 0 to 9. So, if I use one nine, then I use another nine, then the sum is 18, then I use a 2, 
then that is how I'll be able to make this sum 20. Now I can say that 299 is the number that I can make. Uh, that is the minimum uh, number of digits in which I can make 20. Okay, because one digit I have taken 9, another digit I have taken 9 and the remaining sum that I need is 2. So overall this makes nothing but overall sum is 20. Okay, after that I will add 20 zeros in the end. Okay, 20 zeros in the end because the n value here is 20. So since I want to be it to be divisible by 10 to the power uh, 20, so I will add 20 zeros in the end. But how can I uh, make this 299? Like how can I get that? So first of all, what I can see is if n is given as 20, so I'll be using as many 9s as possible. Okay, now how many 9s did I use here? If you will see, so I use, I made the number 299 because I will not make ni uh, like 992 or I'll not try to make 929. I'll try to make 299 only. Okay, that is the uh, permutation that I'll have. So how did I know that I'll be using two nines here? So if you will see, if I divide 20 by 9, so what do I get? If I divide 20 by 9, so I'll get nothing but 2. Okay, 20 by 9 is nothing but 2 because uh, 9 twos are 18. So I'll get nothing but 2 here. Okay, so that means I'll be, I need two twos, right? At, I, at least I need two, uh, like I need two nines. So, uh, so that is why I'll need two nines. So that's how I can get it. But before this, like it is also necessary for me to check whether I need uh, another number or not. I need another number, another digit that is lesser than nine or not. Because suppose if, uh, if suppose that the n value, suppose that the n value was something like 27. In that case, I need only three nines, correct? So in that case, I will say that, okay, 27 divided by 9 will be nothing but 3. So I need only 3 9s, right? That is nothing but n divided by 9. That many number of 9s I need, okay? n divided by 9 is nothing but 3. So I can say that I, I need only 3 9s. I need only 3 9s is my answer, correct? Because that will give me the sum as 27. And after that, I can add 27 zeros. But in this case, when they will, uh, suppose they give me n is equal to 20. So in that case, it is not perfectly divisible by 9. So in that case, what I can say is, I can say that, okay, 20 divided by 9, that is nothing but n divided by 9 gives me nothing but 2. So, I'll have two 9s here. I'll have two 9s in my answer for sure. But before that, is there any other digit that I need to have? Yes, because if you will see for 27, so uh, for 27, n by uh, 9 is nothing but 3. So, I need three 9s. And other than this, I do not need any digit before that, correct? But if they give me something, uh, if they give me a particular n value that is not a multiple of 9, in that case, I need another digit that is lesser than 9. So here you can see if, if I am given n is equal to 20. So in that case, what I have to do is I have to also get another part. Like this sum is nothing but 18. But there is some remainder part also remaining that I need. So I need a 2 here. Now what is this 2? This 2 is nothing but the remainder. Because if you will see here. So uh, if I do uh, 20 modulo 9, that is the remainder. So what is the remainder? Here? Remainder is nothing but 2. So I'll say that, okay, first of all, I'll see that if I have any remainder, so I'll add it to my answer. After that, uh, I will add n by 9 number of 9s in my answer. Okay. Suppose that if I'm given n is equal to 5, if I'm given n is equal to 5. So in that case, what will happen? How many 9s do I need? I need no 9. So in, I need 0 number of 9s. So n by 9 will be what? Uh, it will be nothing but 5 by 9. So that will give me 0. So I need 0 number of 9s. But is there any remainder remain uh, like is there any remainder is uh, with nine? Yes, five model nine for five model nine uh, module nine gives me nothing but five. Okay, so in this case, I'll use a five, and after that, I will add n number of zeros. So basically, five zeros I will have after this, so that I can make it divisible by ten to the power nine, uh, ten to the power five, and it is also uh, like uh, basically it will be like this, and this number will be the smallest number that is divisible by ten to the power five here. Okay, and similarly, when I'm given, let's say n is equal to 20. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll check that if n modulo 9, if it is not equal to 0. So if it is having some remainder, right? So suppose if it was given like 21, if it n was 21. So in that case, what I will do here is I can say that how can I make 21? So 21 can be nothing but 399 because uh, if I see n divided by 9, so that will be nothing but uh, 21 divided by 9. And this will be nothing but 2 because I need two nines at least, right? And is there any remainder? Uh, yes, the remainder is there because 21 is not perfectly divisible by 9. So what I'll say is if n modulo 9 is not equal to 0, in that case, in my string, first of all, I'll add the remainder. So I'll say that, okay, in the answer, I'll add the remainder part. So that will be nothing but answer plus is equal to n modulo 9. So that will be nothing but first of all, 3 will get added to my answer. After that, what I'll do is 
I'll add the number of nines that I require. So n by nine is nothing but two. So I'll add two nines after that. Okay. And after this, since I want the number to be divisible by ten to the power n, that is nothing but ten to the power twenty one. Let's say. So in this case, I'll add twenty one zeros in the end. That is what I have discussed in the starting. That if I wanted a particular number to be divisible by ten uh, to the power one, okay. In that case, uh, I'll add like I need one zero at least. If I want a number to be divisible by ten to the power two, then I need two two zeros. If I want a number to be divisible by ten to the power three, then I need three zeros. Right. So that is what I'll be doing. So basically, first of all, I need to check that if there is some remainder uh, for n modulo nine. If there like if there is some remainder. When the number is divided divided by nine, if there is some remainder, so first of all I'll add that remainder uh, in terms of digit. Like let's say it was twenty one. So first of all I was getting three. Then after that, how many nines I need to use? I can get that using n by nine. That is nothing but let's say twenty one by nine here. So that will be nothing but two. So I'll add two nines, and after that they will be followed by twenty one zeros here. So that is what I'll be doing in this particular question. So let's quickly write the code for this approach. Then we'll also discuss the time and the space complexity as well. So what I'll be doing here is uh, I'll be declaring a string here because I have to return the answer in terms of string. So I'll make the uh, like uh, string answer as null, and then I'll check that if the number modulo nine if it's equal uh, like if it's not equal to zero, okay. So if there's some remainder there, so in that case what I'll say is I'll say that okay answer is equal to nothing but uh, two string. Like first of all I need to initialize like update the answer as two string n modulo nine because whatever the number is there. I need to convert it into string because I'm uh, updating it in string. So let's say it was 21. So in that case, I will make the digit as 399 overall. But first of all, I need this three, and since I want to return the answer in form of a string, so I'll uh, make us make it string using the two string function in C++. You can also have the same alternatives in Java and Python as well. Okay, so that is what I'm doing here. After this part is done, so how many nines uh, did I have here? So that I can get using n by nine. Okay, that is nothing but two. So I am uh, I am going to run a loop uh, from uh, like starting from one till two. That is two nines I'll be adding to my answer. Okay, so whatever number of nines uh, I need to add, so I can run a loop for that. So I starts from one. I is less than equal to n by nine. So basically, whatever number of nines I need to add, so that I can add using this particular loop. So I'll say that okay, answer plus is equal to nothing but nine. Okay, so I'll add nine to my answer. I'll keep on updating nine to my answer as many times as I want. Because if suppose n value here is twenty one, in that case n by nine. Then when i is equal to two, then another nine will be added. Then when i will be three, then the condition will be violated, and no further nines will be added for n is equal to twenty one. Okay. After this part is done, so since I want to make the number uh, divisible by ten to the power n, so in that case I need n zeros in the end as well so i'll run another loop for that so i starts from 1 i is lesser equal to n then i'll do an i plus plus here uh, that is nothing but adding n n's in the end so i'll say that okay answer plus is equal to nothing but zero so i'll add uh, zeros uh, one by one so i'll add n zeros in the end and then my number has been built so i'll simply return that answer so i'll simply return this particular answer that i have calculated Uh, let us now try and compile this code to see if it works on the samples or not. Uh, it does work on the samples. You can see for uh, n is equal to five, we are getting the output as five thousand because uh, for n is equal to five, you can clearly observe that when n is equal to five, then the number of nines that you need is nothing but zero nines. Okay, so you have uh, the remainder is nothing but five. So first of all, you will get it. Then after that, you will add five zeros uh, in the uh, end of the number. Right, and then you will simply return this particular string. Okay, so that is what we are doing here. Let's now try and submit and see if it works for all the test cases as well. Okay, so you can see that our submission is working for all the test cases, and the problem gets accepted. Now, talking about the time complexity of this particular code. So the time complexity, if you will observe, so it is what. First of all, you can see that uh, this is an if condition, so it will be constant time. Then we are running a loop from uh, one till n by nine. So basically, uh, the first loop for for adding nines it takes n by nine time. Okay. Then we are running another loop to add n nines to our answer. So that takes nothing but order of n time. Okay. So the overall complexity will be nothing but order of n only. Okay. Or this complexity is nothing but order of n time complexity. Talking about the space complexity. So first of all, we are taking a constant space for adding the remainder. Right. 
After this, we are adding uh, n by 9 number of 9s. So that means order of n by 9. Okay. Plus we are adding n zeros in the end uh, of the number. So order of n for that. Okay. Now overall complexity, uh, space complexity will be nothing but order of n as well. So if you understood this problem, make sure to hit the like button. Comment down understood as well. And make sure to subscribe the channel as well. Thank you.